I'm standing in Adams Kodesh's new home right before our new, our own beautiful ark. The sanctuary is really coming along. It looks beautiful. And we're really excited about having in-person services here very soon. Today's sermon is, don't be a wise fool. Behalotacha 5781. We think of young people as impulsive, foolish, too smart for their own good. Think of the word narishkeit. comes from the Hebrew word na'ar, a youngster. Somebody who is young and foolish. Think of the word sophomore. What does it mean? It means to be a wise fool. You have a little bit of knowledge, just enough to be dangerous. I remember when I got my yellow belt in jujitsu, they told us that yellow belts are the most dangerous people. Why? Because you know just enough to have a false sense of confidence that you really can take care of yourself. We associate it, on the other hand, age with wisdom. You think about the elderly sage, people like Ben Franklin, Obi-Wan Kenobi for that matter. The Talmud warns us, it says, wait a minute, age doesn't necessarily equal wisdom. Let's look at our Parsha. The people go to Moshe and they're complaining they're tired of the man, the heavenly bread. They want meat. They're saying, where's the beef? Remember the Wendy's commercial, where's the beef? That's what they're saying. Moshe says to God, I can't take it anymore. These people are driving me crazy. It's like a parent who's burned out. God says to Moshe, Moshe, don't worry. Here's what we're going to do. Asaf li shvim ish mizik ne Yisrael. Gather unto me 70 elders from Israel. And these men, these elderly men, will assist you in leading the people. This is going to be a Sanhedrin eventually the court, but now these people like cabinet members who are assisting the president in governance. The clear implication is these elders are wise people who are up to the job of assisting Moshe in leadership. But the Talmud in Kedushin says, wait a minute, are all elderly people simply wise? Just because you're an elder, are you wise? He says, what about the Ashmai, the elderly unrefined person, literally means a waste of a person. Why is this person a waste? Because they never accumulated knowledge throughout life. Instead of learning from their mistakes, they made the same mistake over and over again. That's the opposite of the Zakain, the elderly wise person. Talmud tells us that Zakain an elder is a contraction of ze kana. This he has acquired. What has this person acquired as they traveled the road of life? Wisdom. They're wise because they've learned from life. They've learned from their mistakes. Now we could say learn from your mistakes and that's true, but it's also trite and boring. But before you dismiss it as trite and boring, stop and think about this. How many times do you not learn from your mistakes? How many times do I not learn from my mistakes? Even smart people often fail to learn from their mistakes. Now, we're all going to make mistakes. The Talmud teaches us a life without sin is a life not lived, which is just a way of saying, you live, you're going to make mistakes and sin. The point is we don't want to make the same mistakes over and over again. A couple of years ago, I read Ron Chernow's biography on Ulysses S. Grant. He says that though Grant undoubtedly was a sharp man, he made the same mistake over and over again. And that was, he allowed himself to be conned by con artists. He simply never learned that in manners, particularly when we're talking about money, you can't be overly trusting of people. And because he was overly trusting and didn't learn, he was ripped off multiple times by con artists. Let's look at it now on a personal level. 
let's say you have a family member who comes home upset. They had a difficult day. And the family member comes home. And instead of supporting the family member, you say, well, I had a tough day also. Or you should just be happy you have a nice house to come home to. Other people have it a lot worse. Those type of responses never help. Why? Because you're responding in an intellectual manner, intellectual manner, while your family member is looking for emotional sympathy, emotional support. I remember a grief counselor once told me that after her mother died, she blurted out to her mother, well, at least you have me and the other kids. And as soon as those words left her mouth, she said, boy, what have I just said? My mom needs sympathy, not to be told, don't worry about it, look at the bright side. Speech like that could come later on, but not when the pain, the emotion of the loss is so raw. Now, let's give her credit for recognizing she made a mistake. And when you recognize you made a mistake, obviously it helps you to avoid making the mistake again. But we also have to be realistic. Even though we might realize we make a mistake, we still may make the mistake again. Why is that? Because in moments of stress, we often revert to those bad old habits, those type of responses. Well, I had a bad day also, or just be happy for what you have. You have a beautiful house to come home to. However, the wisdom we accumulate allows us to learn how to respond appropriately. So we can fight that Yetzirah, that evil inclination, which tells us to blurt out, I had a tough day too, just be happy for what you have. And even if we respond appropriately, sometimes that's a great start. It's a great place to be. Think about the baseball team that has a 600 winning percentage. That's a good record. They're still losing 40% of the time, but 60% of the time they're winning and they're doing well. They're likely in first place. What's the message here? The wise person doesn't demand respect because of their age. Think about the parent that refuses to apologize to the child. That parent is a fool, quite honestly. What are they teaching their child? They're teaching their child, never apologize. Even though you know you're wrong, dig your heels in and double down. Is that the message that you want to send to your child? No, of course not. A wise person learns from his or her mistakes so they can live a better life and role model good behavior to others. Shabbat Shalom.